Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video, this is Mark. Today we're going to be starting a brand new series that I've been planning for quite a while. It's going to be a series that's looking at actually building a route from early stages through to completion and showing the entire process of that within the uh, Train Sim 2020 route editor. So, as you can see on the screen in the minute, we've got Wakefield Kirkgate. Now our plan with this is to take this route through to Nottingley and show essentially more or less the whole building process from track laying to completion. How many episodes this is going to take, I don't know. I plan for each one to be about an hour in length. And obviously it's going to run into many episodes, but I want to keep it a fairly short route. So 10 miles, Wakefield to Nottingley, a couple of stations. And we're going to try and build it up to release on our new website that we're currently in the course of making. Um, and we'll be ready to announce that soonish. It's a case of getting the website into a state where it can be uh, used properly first. And having the motivation to do it. So this is to kind of a break from that to be honest. Uh, the route one here currently is the Manchester to Leeds route. So this what's gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the weight filter not only onto this route. And then what we're gonna do what is we're gonna do what just trains do. So what I do at just trains is when I'm making a standalone product for them, you initially build it on the main route, then you at the end you can clone it, break it off, and make it into its own standalone route. So that means that we can do weight filter not only without needing the Manchester to Leeds bit, but it means it's easily mergeable onto Manchester to Leeds to be included for free as part of the Manchester to Leeds route, so it'll give extra mileage. The reason I'm not building on Manchester to Leeds, it's on hold at the minute. It's on hold for an indefinite period, but hopefully only a few weeks. Um, currently we're switching all our assets across from the Vulcan Productions library to our new developer folders, and that's taking Callum quite a while because it's a pretty sort of monotonous process and it's got to be done properly so it's currently in the process of moving all the assets across to our new folders once we've done that then we can get swapping the assets in RW tools and whatever TS tools sorry and get on with making Manchester leads again but in the meantime I'm going to focus on doing this and then we can get a bit more root mileage into the game so if you watched the last developer diary you'll know that this is Wakefield Kirkgate a uh, custom model that will be in included with the Manchester to Leeds route uh, more information on that route obviously is going to follow once I've got the website finished. We're going to plan on doing a blog for that route and stuff like that. In terms of overall progress since the last developer diary, there's probably been about four or five miles extra scenery done, but nothing major has uh, really taken place. It's been on hold since I think it's like the second week of April, first week of April, something like that. So what we're doing here is we're looking at wait for Kirkgate. I'm going to go across from here where the track's currently laid to. And it'll go over somewhere over here to Nottingley. So episode one of this series, we're going to be doing the track from the east side of Wakefield up towards Nottingley. We'll see how far we get in episode one, but it's basically going to be track work in this episode. So this is the current limit of track, and this is Oakenshaw Junction area. So the line off to the right there, that one used to be double track and just gone to the middle of main line. And we'll get into all that in a minute, because it gets quite... Um, messy up here as you get further on. So what we're doing here is we've got a limited track, we've got Google Maps enabled, um, there's various tutorials for that, I think Matt Peddleston did one for how to, get Google Maps Ooh, how to do your gradients, so, and I would probably recommend the British Railways gradient profile book that was reprinted, uh, I think it was about two years ago, three years ago, something like that. That's probably the best one out there in terms of the actual books that I've seen recently. Um, otherwise it's, it's obviously it's a challenging thing to get hold of. Main lines generally are covered in that book and you, you can get a pretty good feel for it. The documents that I'm using are a little bit more accurate but they can be really fiddly so um, what we've got here is up to milepost 49.263 263 yards and I need to work out the next section of my gradient which I will do now. So I now know having just gone into calculate and stuff that I need to lay 579 metres of grade of track, a gradient rising at 1 in 440. So this is the end of the 1 in 160 that we have here. I now know that I need to lay at 1 in 440 going up the hill. So to do that, I'm going to select my track. I'm going to select um, track concrete 01. Select that over here. I'm going to change our gradient We've set to two tracks already. I'm going to change the gradient from one is uh, 160 uphill to 440 uphill, which is down here on the left. Just let me check if I'm capturing my cursor because I don't think I am. 
Uh, that should make it a bit easier for you to follow. So we've got a one in one, one in four hundred and forty. Just going to recheck how much I said it was for. It was for five hundred and seventy-nine meters. Easements at the moment I've got turned off because Crofton West Junction is just ahead of us, and I don't want to be um, laying uh, easement curves on point work. I just find it a lot easier not to do that personally. Some people do, but you can't do super elevation on curves anyway, where there's junctions. So. I just prefer not to have the easement turned on if I know there's a junction on that curve. So we're going up the hill here, we've got 579 metres. Now we're coming across an issue here already, look, the track's going straight under the terrain. So what we can do is, once we've, obviously you've got your DEM data installed, if you haven't, check out the video that's just popped up in the top corner where it's popped up. Um, that's a tutorial on how to get actual real life hill data into your game. So I've already got that in, I've got it in my folders. And what I'm going to do now, first, is because I don't want the track to go straight through this hill and I won't be able to see where I'm laying it I'm going to make the track ahead of us, the terrain ahead of us temporarily come down to the level of our current track so that it's a bit easier so I'm going to set the range of the uh, sort of base width how far away the track will uh, the terrain will mesh to the current level of track got the magnet select clicked up here so that it selects terrain attached to the track Track tool selected down here. I've got a bush size of about 40 on, but it doesn't actually need to be uh, quite that wide. And I'm just going to go ahead of us along the track bed and sort of select the terrain to bring it down to a level where we can just lay that next bit of track through this hill. Otherwise, we won't be able to see where we were laying it, as I said. So, again, we know we need 579 meters at 1 in 440. So, here we go. That's 500 meters. You can only lay 500 meters in a single stretch on train sim. That's how far it goes. Then you have to start another straight. So again, we're going to go into the hill there if we're not careful. So we're going to go ahead again with the terrain tool. And lay that to there. And then we know we need another 79 meters. Yeah, 79 meters we need. Of 1 in 4, 4, 40. 1 in 4, 4, 4. Christ, I can't have big numbers now. There's a man on the track there on Google. Be a network rail guy, no doubt. So 79 meters is to there. And then we start curving. So we need to find out what the next gradient is. So my next gradient is level track. And that's basically why we're going over this junction, I suspect. And that is for just getting the measurement in my calculator. 581 yards. I then need to convert my yards to my meters because that's what train scene works in. So for 531 meters, the track is level. So we've selected level track now. We've got it down to a zero on here. I'm going to select track concrete two again. And this is Crofton West Junction. So in real life, well, in the game as well, this line up here goes across to Hare Park Junction. And it joins the leads to Doncaster line, which runs across over there. Uh, it joins up just sort of on that hill over there. We're turning left here towards Nottingley, ultimately towards Ghoul, Drax, those places. And this line that we're going under here is the Midland Main Line, or the former Midland Main Line. Uh, currently, this is the Monk Breton branch. and goes on the back of Crofton Depot, which is just up here. The former Midland Main Line used to carry on towards Normanton up there. Uh, it used to be a four track railway and back in the day you can sort of tell that by how wide the formation is and there used to be some colliery sidings and stuff here as well and there's still a curve actually quite a steep curve links this railway to that one the one that we're on is the former Lancashire and Yorkshire railway from Manchester to Hull that's what we're doing here the, the Wayfields are not in the line and as I said that's the Midland and then you have the GN main line from Leeds to Doncaster just over there as well so we've got to lay in here 531 metres level track. So we can see the curve starts just there by the bridge. We want to bring it in, sort of ease it in. We don't want to. We haven't got easements turned on, but we can still control how sharp the sudden changes are. And so we want to be about there. And again, somewhere there. And we're probably going to lay a bit more than 531 metres just so that the curve is a constant radius more and also so that we can measure back to see where to cut it so I'd say there we've laid more than 531 meters 
So we now need to go back and find the point where we changed the gradient from 1 in 160 to level, which is just there. You can sort of see, obviously you can see the bump where the top of the gradient is, but you can tell where the change in gradient usually is by the line on the track, the yellow line. Never use the arrows to change the gradients on the track, as I've said before, because that will really mess your route up if you're not careful. Always use the tool in the bottom left, generally speaking. So, we've found the boundary point there between the 1 in 440 and the level track. We're going to go onto the select tool here, select the point where the change is, and then measure, just literally going to measure up the line to find where 531 metres is. And 531 metres is somewhere, you can see the measurement in the bottom middle of the screen. 531 metres is there. So that's where we're going to cut it. So cut it, we simply select the split tool and hover over where we want to do it. Hold the left mouse button, then drag it across to your next rail and then let go to cut. And then the buffers will appear. And all we're doing then just delete the other two tracks beyond these buffers. As simple as that really. Right, okay, so we've split the track. 531 metres there, a track laid. Now what we've got to do is we've got a Lake Croft and West Junction, which is this bit here. Now we've got a little bit of a situation in that these red triangles are nearby. You can't lay point work where there's red triangles because that's like a a break in the network sort of thing. So whether every 500 meters or so you will get these red triangles. You can manipulate where to put them. If you split the track down there for instance, you get red triangles there. And then you could lay some, you'd be able to lay 500 meters from there without red triangles. Or at least that's my understanding anyway. So, we've got this junction to lay here. You can see at the moment obviously we can't see what we're doing because the terrain's below, the Google Maps overlay is below the track. So we can raise it up on this bottom bar and then obviously we can't see the track, so you can change the opacity with the top bar there. So what I usually do is make it just opaque enough to see what you're doing. So what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to try and make a little bit of a better merge there. So we can see that the point work needs to work across here for Croft and West Junction. And it's quite a sharp junction this one. It's a gradient that's level, so we've got level track already selected. Um, and we can go into track concrete one, turn on snap to track, so that means it'll snap across to the point where we want to lay it. We don't want levers on, we want to have no levers on manual junction, so make sure if the junction in real life would be controlled by a signal box, not a lever on the track, make sure this is unticked like it is now. We're going to go to one track, so we only want one track to lay, and then we're just going to confirm exactly where it needs to go. So it's here, and we're going to put it across like that, and then make a slight straight so we can make it a little bit sharp on the back end, and then that's done it to just about where we need it to be. Now you'll notice, now that I've done that, that the points are actually blocked. They're not free-flowing point work. So if we go somewhere else, say fly down here, and look at these points, Note the V shape, the points aren't blocked. If we go back to those ones that we've just laid back at Croft and West, wherever they are, you've not got the V shape, you've got sort of like a weird Y and they're actually blocked, they're not point work as such. So to fix this we need to just cut in between those crossovers. So you get the cut tool, the split tool, and just move it as close as possible to the end of your um, point work, but before, obviously after the end of the uh, inward bits, and then just left click. So what we've done there is that's split the track and it's got the, the sort of unblocked them, so you've got the, uh, the V-shape back. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to go to your weld tool, and then when this grey box appears you just weld it and you'll get a red triangle in the middle. If you keep a red box like that, so if there's still a horizontal thing like that, a rectangle, that means the track's split there, that's not actually connected. You need it to be connected, like so. So now it's turned to a triangle, I know that bit's connected. So we've got the first crossover in there, 
It's a really slow junction. This one's like 20 mile an hour, I think, or something like that. And then what we need to do is it's a weird sort of junction as well. It's sort of like different tracks are different uh, distances apart and stuff. But now we need to lay the second leg of this. And there's just going to be a slight break in the video here as well because I need to actually go onto the gra um, gradient profile sheet to find the actual gradients from these two junctions from Grafton West to Hare Park. Right, so I've gone into the gradient profiles and I've found that it's 1 in 300 for 563 metres up the hill. So, because we're just coming off this junction here, I'm going to keep it at the same level, obviously, immediately, as this line that we've already laid. So we keep it on a level track for the first, like, literally 100 yards or so. And we want to split it across there. So start straight away. And then, sort of, see where the trajectory is going to go. And make sure that it's sensible for starters. And follow the track work in that direction. So we've laid a little bit more than we need to lay at level track. So we can go back to here, sort of halfway along. Split it, like I've done there. Delete the last bit. And then... We can go to the 1 in 300, lay it as a double track section, because it's back close together again there. And we're just going to lay this first section of track. So this, this line, what we're doing here, it connects up from Crofton West Junction to Hare Park Junction. Now you'll note there that we've got quite a long stray ahead of us. And that I've not quite lined it up. Look, it's not going at the same length, as uh, the same trajectory as the actual track goes. It's going off at a right angle, so sort of right, favouring the right hand side. So to fix that, we need to cut back a bit. And this is where track work can get really finicky, and it can make some of the really awkward videos, such as this one. Um, but this is a sort of aspect that I want to be able to show. Because it's the really awkward bits that a tutorial can't cover. Because in a tutorial, and the main reason I'm doing this is because in a tutorial, um, everything goes right. If you're doing a tutorial, you're not going to get it right. Either. I mean, it's a tutorial. The whole idea is to get it right. It's like, oh, this is perfect. It's a tutorial. Um, by doing this, I can show the warts on everything of doing the track. So what I've done there is I, I misaligned it again. So I've, I've got to now try again to make sure that the straight goes exactly where the railway goes up the hill. And look, it's still, as we're getting further up, the two yellow lines are still slightly to the right of the actual alignment. So, if you've overcompensated going too far into the curve, you just keep cutting back, using the split tool, cutting back until you get to the point where the trajectory is correct. So we'll have a look now, it should be a little bit closer. It is, look, it's quite a bit closer. So we're nearly there now. So I'd say just another couple of metres off there, because a, a little bit of this end makes a big difference at the other end. And if you're not careful, you end up overcompensating, and you end up the opposite side to where you actually should be. We're still slightly, ever so slightly, too far to the right. So one last adjustment, just literally a few centimetres, should mean... that we are more or less level up there. Now I'd say that's still, again, slightly off to the right. So once again, I'm just going to knock a, a small section off. That's like literally not even a metre that we've knocked off at the curved end. And once again, just seeing if we're on the right alignment. And there, this time, we're actually pretty much spot on. So we have to remember what we were doing here, and that is that it's 300 meters, uh, one in 300, and it was for 563 meters that we were laying it. So we go back here, select tool, and then just highlight the track for 563 meters, 
and that'll be the point where we're cutting and the next gradient would start now, I'm not going to go any further than that just now eventually later in the process I will go a little bit further up there but right now I'm not going to do uh, because I want to cover a little bit more down this end of the junction before I do that so remember it's back to level track we're going back down the hill now we're going to lay this curve back in here to Crofton West Junction track concrete is 01 use the snap to track tool and we're just going to go around on the inside here as the real one does and it sort of comes back in just before you meet uh, before this crossover here so they stay a decent width apart so we've got that in matches the overlay and then what we can see here is we've got another block point here so don't cut back on this side because we've already cut that side as we know we cut on this bit here and then you can see the difference and I'll just sort of undo and redo it you can see what a difference that's made there it actually puts the V into the uh, point work it unblocks it as, as the actual term that I use usually again don't forget to weld up the bit that you've just cut as well because if you don't weld it will obviously be knackered so those all look nice and decent enough um, again it's a really slow jump it's like 20 mile an hour so the next job is to smooth our gradients because we've just changed the gradients here and we haven't actually smoothed them yet so you can see there, there's a, there's a if I have, if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says one in zero because it's level. It jumps straight to one in two nine nine. It doesn't have any grad, gradual sort of change in it. So in real life, it wouldn't just go one in naught to one in three hundred. It'd be a gradual slope. So what, the way to change that is to use your select tool. Select. I usually select about fifty two hundred meters at least um, away from the giant from where the gradients change. Although if it's on a main line you'll probably select even further than that but here we're just going to select from sort of this distance away go about 100 meters past where you know the gradient changes 50 to 100 meters and then let go of your left mouse button go to the end so you know where the uh, smooth bit was and then all you do is press the smooth gradient button and then you'll notice that we now have yellow arrows all the way along here and that's telling us that this is now a smooth gradient if we look at the right hand track where we haven't smoothed it you'll see there's no yellow arrows and also you can still see the, the bump just there you can see this quite a sharp bump whereas on this one you can't see any bump at all and you can see it perfectly it's a perfect uh, example there look the left hand side nice gradual slope you can't even see any movement in the gradient right hand side you can see a really sharp kink there but it's not been smoothed out. So we go down here, select tool, and we want to do it on this other track as well. So before the point work there, probably so maybe just drag it a little bit further this way actually, somewhere there. Because this point work nearby, you've got to be careful with the tool. And then select that bit, 120 meters or so. And if you just watch where that yellow line goes halfway across there, when I press the smooth gradient tool, you'll see that it should disappear, the noticeable change. And there you could just see it flick up then so what we're going to do is because we've messed around near points we're just going to check that the point work is um, all rendered correctly no big jumps in it or anything and it's not it's fine it's all good so what we've done there is we've just laid a basic junction we've laid Croft and West Junction now to try and cover a couple of different aspects in the video I'm not going to do stuff in the order I necessarily would normally but I'm going to cover um, signaling on this junction so the video will stop and there'll be a little cutscene whilst I have gone away and looked at my documents and I'll be back in a second but we'll signal now Croft and West Junction from this side so you can sort of get an idea of exactly how to do a signaling on a, a basic junction such as this so back in a sec okay so I've got my signal diagrams I've got a cab video and I've got um, photos so I can now tell what signal goes in this location. So it's a four aspect feather signal obviously with a right hand feather to control traffic onto the hair park line. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use the JT signals like we are on Manchester to Leeds. So we're going to go into root building assets, the signal tool, go down to JT. And we want to select the L4A variants. Um, and these big things like 1T, 0T, that's your links to your tracks. So we're setting a route from this signal and we've got two routes we're going to, we can travel. We've got a left hand route and a right hand route. And there's two um, routes from the signal as well. The signal only has two operations you can either tell trains to go straight on, which is effectively around the corner to the left, or you can tell trains to go right. So the signal in our life has a right hand feather, and that is an F4. So we're going to pick a L4A signal, so that's a LED 4 aspect 2 track link signal. So you've got two links to the track, and then it's an F4. The F4 refers to the position of the feather. So the feather on the top of the indicator, there, the top of the signal, the root indicator, is accurate to what it is in real life. It goes off to the right. So what we do then is we place the signal in the position we want it. We can tell on Google Maps, for starters, that's where it actually is. You want to place your initial link slightly ahead of the actual signal. So we'll place it about a metre ahead there. And then with your first link, so you go away from the signal, we've got two links to place. So the initial link doesn't count. The 2T refers to what, you've done, what you do after the initial link. So this is link number one. We're going to place it just after the control injunction. So the signal knows that this track is the one link track. Okay. So we've got that placed there. All I do now to place that is left click. Now a key thing to remember that I've always been taught by JT, I don't know how important it is, is always make sure that your main route has the one link. So the main route in this instance obviously is the straight on route, i.e. the left route. The right hand route, the slower route, is the two link. So again, we place this just past where the uh, junction is. Just left click and it's placed. Your next signal then appears, just right click to click off that. So what we do then is we go back to the signal, left click it. You can check your links. So you've got a link just in front, the initial link. It's got no number above it, that's how you know it's the initial link. And it also appears straight after you place the signal. And then we've got link number one, and then number two, just up there past the junction. So in terms of controlling that signal, we double click the post. And then what we get then is we get this window on the right hand side. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put in the actual number for the signal. So I can see from my signal diagram that say signal WK6773. So that's Wakefield Kirkgate. 6773. So you've got the ID for the signal box in the left box. And you can have up to four of those I think. If you've ever wanted four of those. Um, and you can have four numbers as well, so 6773 is the number. One, that box doesn't need anything in it, because it's just the main aspect lights will be used. The two link, again that's the one that goes off to the right to hair park junction, needs this feather to light up to tell trains that you're approaching and you're going to be turning off. So all we're doing there is because it's an F4, and F, the number of that refers to the direction of the feather, so F4 is the top right, you get F5 is the middle right, and F6, the sixth feather, would be bottom height. So all we're going to do is on track light number 2 we're going to type a 4, and that tells track light number 2 to light up feather number 4. So feather number 4 is the top right one. You always need to be using the correct signal with the correct track link. If I put a 2 in here it wouldn't be the right one because it won't match what this feather is. This is an F4 feather. So we put a 4 in there. That tells track link 2 to control the signal in that direction. Now you don't have to really go in a certain speed for this junction. Um, it can change before the train even gets there. So all I'm going to put on there is a limited aspect tick. I'm not going to put anything so it's like you've got to pass the AWS ramp at 5 mile an hour to get it to light up. It's not like that. Um, as far as I know, the signal does have TPWS as well, right next to it. So in which case, I'm going to place that next. So for a TPWS ramp, we go down this list and find 
TPWS ramps. Now I always select and put my favourites to a box, the red box. So I'm going to right click TPWS, TSS box. I'm going to left click on the red box there. And then I can find it nice and easily every time I need it. So there's different types of TS, uh, T, uh, TPWS. Now TPWS is what stops your train if you go through a red signal or you're over speed near a signal and stuff. There's different ones that you can replace. The one where you want is the TSS one. Train protection one is system grid. Train stop sensor will apply the brakes if passed on the signal is red. Place next to signal. So what you do with this one, you can hold tab to snap it over the track. You place it, get the arrow, let it go of the left mouse button. And then when you've snapped a track it will always be floating so make sure you just drop it down to the right level um, above the track. Always make sure that your TPWS link uh, is above the ramp obviously. More importantly, make sure it's behind your main signal link because what this TPWS ramp is doing is it's looking to head to the next signal link. So it's looking for your next initial signal link. And what it's asking itself is it's saying, is that signal red? And if this signal's red, it'll cause the brakes of a locomotive going through that signal at red to, be, uh, to apply. Obviously if the signal is any other colour than red, then it'll not apply the brakes. But if you go through that signal at red now, the brakes are going to come on. Regardless of whether you've got spad protection on in the game or anything like that, it'll come, they'll come on. Uh, very useful for Tom, obviously, when he uh, goes through red signals. So we've got that place. We're going to save my changes there. So I always save every 10, 15 minutes or so, even sooner than that sometimes, depending on what you're doing. Um, next signal, there's a ground signal just up here by the... Um, junction and this ground signal allows movement from here basically just back up onto the two lines there so it'll be a two link signal so what we're doing is we're going to the list it's not a preset red either it's a ground signal Well, as long as signal list, it's a red one because it's not usually lit. Um, it's new, or, or should I say, it's usually lit red. Um, and you won't really be able to tell, I don't think, where this actually goes, but it, I know for a fact it's there. You can just see it. It's quite a tall ground signal. It goes there. And all we're doing is putting the initial link again just in front of it. And. That's more the main room for that signal. And we're just placing the two links there on the two tracks that uh, you could take from that signal. I guess thinking about it, it should probably be a free link. It should be a free link, not a two link. This is three options from there. Unfortunately, my signal document isn't the most ideal one in the world. It doesn't tell me exactly what this signal does. So unfortunately in these situations sometimes you do have to um, use what you believe it would do rather than what it might actually do because you can't exactly just cancel a route because you don't know what a signal does. Uh, WK again. And this one is 8208. So in the item column 8208. Now with this one we don't need to type any numbers in. It's just a free link ground signal. It's going to go across there. I can't see that ever getting used to be honest in the game, it's a very unusual shunt signal. Um, it doesn't actually really do anything. Uh, I've never known anything to really reverse here. There was actually a drill here last week as I record this, there was a, a GBRF66 came across these points and someone managed to derail going down the hill towards Wakefield. The local ended up about where that signal is there, I'm not sure how that happened. One thing we didn't do with this signal is we managed not to place the AWS ramp, which was clever. So we want to select next to the signal there and go back along the track for 180 meters and select there. Now in the UK, the main lines, AWS ramp should always, apart from special circumstances, be 180 meters from the signal that they are controlling or referring to. So we go to the top of the JT signal list here. Again, I'm going to put the AWS ramp in my favourites tab. 
and I'm going to just hover over the track with tab so it snaps it left click to place left click again and then press B to lower it down into the track so we've got that there that signal is now fully set up I'm going to play mode and it'll be red so we've got two little signals set up there basic signals we've got a basic bit of tracking so next up we've obviously got two signals on this side of the junction as well and I need to see exactly where they are because at the moment I don't know exactly where they are there's one of them you can obviously tell where signal is because you can see the shadow on Google Maps and you can also see with the location cabinets now I know this route really well because I actually live from here I literally live on that hill over there um, so this is my local route so I know where they are anyway but with such as just trains in the main line we might not know where stuff is exactly I generally tend to have cab rides and Google Google Maps on and stuff like that and as many as many different tools as I can possibly have you can never have enough um, reference material when you're route building so again this is a four aspect signal and this one, all this one does is controls from here to the main line. So it's a one T, it's a one track link. It only has it only links to one other track. Uh, note the terrain's not at the level of the track at the minute, so it's gonna be a bit below at the moment. And I can soon sort that. So we press the link just in front of the track in front of the signal, and then we're gonna go up there with link one. So we've placed that signals in, bring this one back up to level. And that signal is WK6817. WK6817. So again, there's no other routes with that. We don't need to do anything with that box there. It's, it's a one track link. It'll just look to see if the line's clear down there to the next signal. If it's not, it'll stay red. If it is, it'll be green or yellow or whatever. So we can put another TPWS light ramp alongside this one. So roughly there. When the arrow appears, the opposite way, you just hold shift and it'll appear back in the right direction. You just drop it down once again. Make sure it's behind the signal link as we went through before. And then again, select your track, and you're going back 180 meters to work out um, exactly where the AWS ramp should go, which is here. And there we go. So we've got the AWS ramp laid there in between the track. Now I know there's one other signal as well here. There's actually a ground signal facing the other way just before um, the junction here. So let's see if we can see that on Google exactly where it is. It's just there. So I'm actually snap the terrain up this time uh, for a brief minute. Back up the list to the GPS GPLS red and it's going to be a two link signal just to make sure we cover all routes if I don't know the exact routing of a signal I'll make sure it covers all available routes and again I don't have a document that tells me the exact operation of that signal in modern day I do have one for 1980s actually I have one for the 1960s for this area as well but the current era one Unfortunately, my document just tells me what type of signal it is um, and where it's placed. It doesn't tell me the exact operation of it, which is uh, it's a little bit of an annoyance, but it's one of those things you've got to live with. You're actually lucky to have a, a signal diagram in the first place because they really are quite tricky to get hold of. Same as with the gradient profiles, I'm not supposed to be giving, uh, I don't give them out because I'm not allowed to. Um, unfortunately, I would love to, but. Uh, the person that gave me them kindly requested me not to send them out anywhere. Um, 
next signal should be back up around the curve. So this curve here. Now I don't know exactly where it is. I think it's there. But I can usually, you can tell because what you, you find is an AWS ramp on Google Maps. So that tells us there the next signal is 180 meters away. Um, we haven't actually laid track yet for that signal to be laid. So we'll do that in the next episode probably. So as you remember when we first laid this bit of track what we did was we dug this huge stupid hole in the terrain um, and the way we can just fix that and get it back to how it was and bury the track again if you go into your paint tool obviously you need to make sure you get your DM them installed as I said there's a tutorial already on our channel, channel that goes through that you select the import tool now we could select a bigger area than one by one but we're just going to select this tile only and we're going to import the terrain what that's done there is that's just reset the terrain on this tile to how it was before we laid that bit of track. If you notice, it's not done it here, look, there's a sharp edge there because that's where the tile boundary is. I put tile boundaries on. The white lines is the tile. So I'm about 1,000 metres across for each sort of tile. So we're going to the next tile and just do it again, one by one. And there we go. And that's both tiles there selected. And there's one other, possibly. Maybe not actually, now it's fine. So we got those two tiles. Now there's a gradient somewhere here that we didn't smooth out as well, I believe. And I need to just find exactly where that was. It's just there. You can really see you can really see the change on that one actually. So on a straight piece of track like this, you can actually select uh, multiple tracks when you've got these tracks next to each other, so we're out of the junction and stuff. So you select there, select the second one. Now I know there's a junction just down here. So I want to have it fully flattened out before we get to the junction. So just drag across to about here and then all we're going to do is going to let go of the mouse, or let the left click sorry, and then press up here again smooth gradient and you should see that sharp change here vanish. And there you go, you can see how much it's made a difference there. In terms of sorting this terrain out, it's quite a wide sort of um, cutting in here. So I'm going to select 15 meters from the track for the uh, boundary. Mm, yeah, I think so. That, that'll start cutting terrain 15 meters from the track. Maybe that's a little bit too wide. I reckon 12 is probably more accurate. And then go just up at the track again. It's quite a steep cutting, so it's a 30. Um, cut angle. I always have to check what the name of these tools is because I don't actually know what the name of them is. Now we're doing those are leveling terrain off. It's quite a steep cutting. Those that know Oakenshaw in Wakefield is quite a well-known photo location in Oakenshaw. Um, quite a steep cutting in here. So that's what I've just done there. Now. You can see with the bank in here, it's all jaggedy. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I will, when I come to do scenery, be doing that obviously. But I'd say that's pretty much uh, as it should be in terms of how Oakenshaw cutting should look. Now, we didn't, we didn't actually remember to lay this bit yet. We've not laid it, the second curve. So this is the second track here. It's a, a curve that goes around up to the middle of the line. And we're going to look at doing that next. And we should be able to get that done before the end of this episode. And again, what I'm going to do is I could lay it manually, but I'm just having a look at the radius of it actually. It, whether it, it looks straight, I can't actually remember if it's dead straight or not. So I'm going to look at a photo to just make sure it is. It is dead straight. It goes up on a quite a steep gradient, so we'll need to think, con you know, bring that into consideration with um, what we're doing here. So we've just selected the track there. I'm going to go along here. Just select the track, and then what we're going to do is we're going to offset some track. So to do that, we go up here to the offset tool, click it, and then you get the yellow line where you're going to be offsetting to. So 5 metres isn't quite far enough, so I'm going to go 10 metres. Um, 10 metres. See, that's about right, maybe a little bit 
it's, it's about right. It's a bit. So if you look, it's slightly askew because obviously the curve must the, the straight up's obviously a slightly different trajectory to our main straight in real life. Now this one is a wooden track, so we're going to select the J, not JT, wood track. Christ, what's happening there? Uh, track wooden O1 is what we're going to select. So we want to click the arrow. And that's now offset the track, but you can see, it's, as I said, it's slightly off skew, so we're just going to select it, rotate it around to uh, meet the right sort of uh, angle again. Now, there'll be another break in the video here, because I'm going to have to go and find out what the gradient of this line is. But I know it's quite a steep one, and it's a lot higher than the main line as well. Um, there's a signal somewhere that we need to put in as well once we've done this, just there. And I know at that point... It's probably about three or four meters higher, something like that, maybe. Not two meters, I don't know. Thirty-four meters, thirty-five meters. I would say that should be looking at it about right. There'll be another break in the video now whilst I go and get the actual gradient for this straight section. So I've now got the gradient uh, for this section of track and it's a 1 in 89 downhill. So I'm going to select track button 1. I'm going to check out exactly where it goes down. Roughly to there. And then we need to bring it in. to there. I'd say actually got that completely wrong. I think it's easier for me to be honest. And this shows the trial and error of root building. To admit defeat with that, because I, I wasn't happy with that. So I'm going to go back, made a big cock up of it. And I'm gonna redo it, but I'm gonna actually start it from the point where it starts because that kind of makes sense. Why the hell did I not start it from where it starts? Um, me trying to be clever and it's not worked. So we'll go there. We'll start it again at a one into one sixty gradient to start with, because that's the gradient of the main line. And we're also making sure that we're using the same track rule, and the same track type as the main line, otherwise it won't work. So we've done that. Then what we've got to do is we've got to get it up to a 1 in 89. So I'm going to send it to 89 on there. And we're going to start using track wooden 1 as well. And now we've got to make sure we try and hit the right trajectory again on here. It's probably going to take a bit of trial and error once again to do that. And yeah, you can see. Again, it's gone skewy. I'll turn Google off. Knock a little bit off there. The annoyances of track lane and how fiddly it is. So I've laid it with the wrong bloody track now. And this is why root building can be a right faff. I probably why nobody's actually tried to do videos like this before because it is a very, very faffing job. And again, it's not correct, so I'm going to go back and do it again. So you can see there, now we finally managed to get it, so it goes up at the right sort of angle. And it goes under the viaduct, and then it curves away steeply once again. Around here. Now, I'm not sure, to be honest, if this curve's super elevated or not, but I think it actually may well be a super elevated curve. I've taken one photo on that curve, so we'll find out. Hard to tell, it might not be actually. It connects straight in at that end, so it's not not going to be. It doesn't look like it is from the photo I've got either. I just found it on Flickr. So we're not going to super elevate this curve. Because if it was super elevated, you'd really see the lean on trains. 
it's a really slow curve as well. It used to be a diversion route back in the day, occasionally for Midland Mainline stuff to go into Wakefield if it couldn't go via to go around Wakefield if it couldn't go via Normanton. So the gradient is in. It's uh, one eighty nine for. 627 meters, so wherever I start it, somewhere back here, I guess. There, where the track changes. I'm going to go into that bit in a second as well. I'm going to go up here. 627 is there. I'm going to cut that bit. That's where the end of 189 is. So I'm going to leave it for now. Anyway. I'm not going to bother linking the rest of it up just yet because I want to lay the Monk Breton branch from the Crofton West Junction, Crofton East Junction, sorry, at the top of the hill. And we'll connect it all up then when we've done that. So this bit here, you can see we've got a break in the uh, track types and stuff. So to change that, you can go into the Blend tool, click Blend, and then just there where the where you've got a change in track. Don't do it on the point work side, obviously. You can't anyway, but... You'll see the yellow, yellow arrow up here, and you just press blend, and it'll blend the uh, track up. Although the AP track is uh, a bit naff when it comes to that, to be honest. So we've got that really steep change in gradient that we uh, did here as well. So obviously because this end's quite close to point work, we're going to have to extend where the, bl where the uh, smoothing goes up in that side. So we'll go up there with it. And hit the smooth button, and that's smoothed it out nicely for us. It's quite amazing the sort of difference in height here, but it is quite a uh, pronounced difference in real life as well. There's actually a three arch bridge just there, that one's so much higher than this one, the one on the right. So we've got that bit laid. So, what we've laid there is these junctions, and so. What we'll need to do here then, eventually, is put some lofts in, some embankment lofts and stuff to uh, make it so this meets the terrain, because at the moment obviously it's floating and train some terrain tools are a bit of a naff piece of kit because if you start using the terrain tools you're just going to see that happen and you'll get bits of terrain all over your track so you've got to use lofted embankments to fix that issue which is what we'll be doing so I think the most sensible thing to do next is probably to signal this junction because we haven't got signals on it yet, on either side I don't know exactly where the last signal placed from Kirkgate was. Uh, I didn't place any on this section. I'm not going to go into all those today. I'll probably go into those um, next episode or another episode. Okay, so I now know uh, which signal this is. It is a feather si uh, signal with a feather to the left, and it's also got a calling on box on it. So we need to use an F1 signal, three track links, because there's three routes from it, and there's also a calling on box on the signal as well. So we're going to place it just there, where it is in real life. And what we've got to do is put the link again just in front of the signal. And then there's three routes. So one of the routes goes onto that right hand line. The main route is the middle line. The feathered route is the one that goes across onto the goods line, which is the left hand line. There's a goods loop, which is hidden below all that dirt. So the main line is this one. The secondary route is the one that's the goods loop line, where the feather so that's that one. Track link two. Track link three is the one where the shunt signal will show. And just checking where the shunt next signal back is in relation to that. And it's past those two crossovers. So track link three needs to go here. Now this one will be a little bit more complicated in terms of its setup um, because of the various fins that's going on around here. So with this one, you have to if you are coming down here. And turning left, you'll get the F1 indicator. So that's the feather pointing to the top left is the F1 indicator. Uh, before we do that, we'll put the number in. So it's a signal WK6774. One is the main route, we don't put anything in there. Two is the goods loop. So we're going to put a one in there because it's linking to the one feather and then we're going to tick limited aspect and then for the free link it's going to light up this um, 
shunt indicator because the third route is a shunt route, it's not actually a main route. Um, so to go down there you need the shunt aspect to light up. Now to do that we just press Y and we also put the limited aspect um, tick in. So there's also a stencil indicator on this signal. So what I will do there is I will put the stencil indicator and you can only do two two track links on these. You can I mean if you really want to you can go into all the bin files and start editing stuff but that's above what I'm even knowledgeable in so um, place that one there the initial link now look at the signal and um, the routing. I'm going to place one link there, one link there. Now, track link two, I'm not going to put anything in the box for that one. I only want this to light up when track link number one of the stencil indicator is selected. And it'll indicate the route that has been set. Um, because this indicator will only light up when the shunt signal is selected. And the shunt signal. Trying to select the actual bit that I need to pick now. Ah, there we are. So what we want to do is get a D to show for the down line when that signal is set for um, going across onto that down line, the far right and side line. So we've got that set now. That'll work um, pretty normally. We need to put the TPWS ramp in still. So again, do the same with that as we have done before. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just move all these links a little bit further forward. So I'm going to move that one a bit further up. The stencil box a little bit further up. Make sure I still be on the signal. And then I'm going to bring TPS, TPWS one a little bit further up as well. So we've got all those in now. signal cell, we haven't got an AWS ramp so we need to get the AWS ramp in next let's go back up here measure up and again 180 meters about there now this AWS ramp is going to be facing the wrong way when I snap the track so press that, left click and you get shift, press left, press, hold shift then press left click again to turn that arrow around and then you need to manually turn the AWS round as well. You can obviously do it manually as well, but I just prefer to snap the track initially and then turn it around. Obviously, if you, shit, if you set all your track directionality and stuff up, um, it'll automatically figure that out anyway. But I usually leave my track bidirectional, so it's always flexible. And I prefer to route my scenarios uh, with markers and stuff, but uh, that's all personal preference, really. So we've got another signal to put on this next this other curve as well, and it's essentially the same signal that goes next to it. Um, very rarely is used. I think the only times really this signal gets used is Northern use the Monk Brain branch for skid pan training, so they'll take units up this curve to do that. Otherwise, it doesn't really see much use. Again, one link goes on to the main line, two link to the loop, three link to the right hand side. We go back to your signal again, we're doing the same operation again, and this is why it takes so long to do signals on a route and stuff like that. And the number for this one is WK6841. And one has nothing on it, two gets the one feather to show. Limited aspect Y goes in the free link. Limited aspect again. And again, TPDOS ramp needs to go in. Oh, actually, this one doesn't have a TPDOS ramp. I'm just looking at a photo. That one doesn't have a TPDOS ramp, probably because it's a 15 mile an hour limit, I suspect. Limited use. It will have an AWS ramp, though, which needs to be 180 meters away once again. You can see the other one we placed down there on the other line as well. Again, just the same thing, snaps track, 
manually rotate. Place that in. So that's that one cell. We need the stencil indicator once again. So we'll do that separately right now. Again, I gotta drag this manually into position where I need it to be. And again, I'm just gonna put in D on there. Need to reposition that slightly though. There. Just check the both set up correctly, which they are. So that's another two signals done. Yeah, we'll be able to see now on the map as well. I'm going to play mode. You can actually see the signals that we've done there. We've done about six in total. And there is obviously signals down here as well, and I might leave those for episode 2 because I feel this one's getting a little bit long, maybe. So I'm just going to go away and have a look at my signal diagrams and we'll see. Alright, so I've got the info on the last signal I'm going to place for this episode, and it's going to be to set the direction from here onto the Oakenshaw curve and also goes up on the main line as well. And this one... Looking at the diagram, pretty simple signal, it's just a simple F4 feathered signal. And we're going to go L4A again, and it's going to be a 2T signal, and it's F4 signal. It's not got a shunt one on this, it's just a standard F4 signal. Now Google kindly went and put their copyright label all over where the actual signal is, but it's here somewhere. Again, the one link needs to go on the main line, crucially before the next signal, which is up there. And click that one there. Two link go on to that one. And again, double click the signal. This one is WK uh, 6775. 775. One needs nothing in it because it's the main line link. Two needs the four because it's the fourth ever again and it's a very slow limit on this one but the actual whole junction is really slow so you don't need to do any special limited aspects or anything on it because it's so slow again anyway um, TPWS wise you can place the ramp in snap it into place again and then once again Mess you out for where your radio restaurant needs to be. And obviously, I need to mess around with the terrain again. Like we did before, we're going to snap this. Probably, We'll probably leave this for now, actually. And come back to this in another episode in terms of redoing the terrain. Because it all needs redoing anyway. I like to get me tracking first, then go through and do the terrain. And then do scenery. But again... Each route developer is different, you'll probably find your own style anyway. You may already have your own style if you're watching this as a route builder yourself. So you just lower that down into the track again. So we're going to wrap this episode up now. We're going to do a, a bit of scenario creation. Be back in a second. And we're going to just test those signals that we've placed. Okay, so we've got some basic trains placed. Just chuck some 150s down. And we're going to. Um, just basically test the signals. So we've got a currently got a yellow signal. I'm just going to turn the train volume quite low as well so you can hear me rather than the train. So we've still got 70 showing on the signals. That's because we haven't reset the game yet. Once we reset the game, the signal IDs will appear just fine and you'll see those in the next episode. So we've got cur currently got a yellow signal. We can see from the blue line that we've routed through the junction. Now we're in a free room so we can change the points and stuff. Um, so I change the points and we get a red. 
So we've got a yellow at the minute down to the next signal. That's because this junction here is set against the train. Set it through there. And we should then have a double yellow, then a green. If we set it into the loop, we'll get a double yellow. Because we're going to get a yellow and a feather further down there. So that's how we, we know that's working then. Just from that, we know that signal works fine. But it's a pretty basic signal anyway, so it shouldn't have an issue. Now what we can do here is we can test both these signals. We're on train placed, in theory. We can test the connection. So if I change these points here, our signal then lights up because we're signal now into a good loop. If I change it to the main line, we should just get a single green aspect which we do. Hopefully then if I change it to the other side we get the shunt signal and the D for the down line appearing. So that's proving that that one works fine as well. Now by process of elimination we know that that one would work fine in theory but you'd obviously be testing it in your scenarios and we will do one day anyway. Probably quite a long way in the future. So, we can just take a look at this one now. Now, think about it, we need to move this off here to test the uh, feather. So, I'll just move this one off this uh, section of track. And we'll just move this one down the main, out of the way, because at the moment, it's going to be blocking the way quite a bit. Once we've shifted this, we can then test the other two signals in the other direction, with the other unit. Obviously in real life you'll be going slower than this round here, I'm just getting this on quickly. Got block points there they need fixing. They've been there a while. I'll sort those in the next episode as well. So we've shifted that out of the way enough now, I can just select the other train. And we should be able to, the route's obviously not set at the minute, but as soon as I click this we should get the feather to go onto the other line. Which we have. We got the feather nail round onto the other track. If I change this one here back to the main line, we lose the feather. And we should be able to then head up towards Hair Park Junction and um, Croft West Junction, sorry. So at the moment the line's set to go straight on around the curve. We don't even need to go up to it to actually check. But it should go to double yellow when we change the points to go across. Change to a single yellow to go across the points over there to our tear part junction. Again, if we change these ones in the foreground, we'll get a green to go on the main line around the curve. So it's uh, proven that they're all working exactly as they should be doing. We'll get a single yellow again because I've changed it to the curve. We'll see what happens when we go over the AWS ramp. I imagine because I've not laid much track it'll probably stay uh, yellow, but we'll see. Change for green because we've cleared the AWS ramp there. So that's the end of episode one. I hope you've enjoyed um, what you've seen there. Start of a bit of a new project. Hopefully, we can turn this into something quite interesting and see a route come together. And hopefully, you guys can play it in the end as well. 
uh, from start, almost start to finish. We got a live track. Probably episode two, I think we'll lay some more track towards Notting Leeway because we've not done a bit, not done much there. Lay a bit more track and then maybe come back and finish these signals and do some more track stuff around uh, around this area because we've got track properties to do. Yeah, we've got uh, speeds and stuff like that to do. So we've got quite a lot to do and then we've got a crofting depot to lay as well, which is just up there over the hill. So quite a lot to do and uh, I'm sure it'll be enjoyable. And please don't forget to subscribe. We do appreciate your subscriptions. We appreciate your time, your comments. If you've got any questions, do ask them and I'll try and answer. And in terms of when Tom's streaming these days, he's on Tuesdays and Saturdays, 8pm, generally speaking. And thanks very much for watching, guys. See you later. Goodbye.